way down upon the Swanee River, far, far away. Okay, so we're going to talk about the Swanee River, and we took a tr an outing there. Uh, this was the last outing we took before everything shut down. We just barely <laughs> were able to complete this. We were thinking about this a little bit, whether we should go or not. Um, actually, this was in March. I uh, this type there. It was it was March, because so I remember the the day after we got back was the day that we that everything closed down, and uh, we had our first lockdown. So we were told at that time not to schedule any more outings, but we thought, well, we have this one scheduled, so let's just go ahead and we did, and we distanced, and you know we're careful, but we did travel together in a car so but we're all still here uh so it was a really nice trip to have just before we had to go into lockdown and this is probably one of the prettiest areas the most scenic hikes you can take <clears throat> along the florida trail this whole section in the uh swanee river area all right all right, so the area where we were hiking was the western end of the Swanee River section of the of the Florida Trail. And it's approximately where that starburst is. We started at a park, uh, a county park called Gibson Park, and we hiked west, which is uh, northbound as far as the trail markings are concerned, because as you remember from previous uh, out virtual outings that we've had <clears throat> when we talk about Florida Trail. It's a trail that goes the entire length of Florida from the Everglades all the way up across the Panhandle to Pensacola. So what we say northbound <clears throat> in, this in this section here, we're actually going compass west once we get to the Panhandle, but it's still considered northbound on the trail maps. And so the western end of that section is where we started and we were hiking from east to west and uh, that's northbound as far as the trail maps go and so we started at this county park called gibson park <clears throat> and we continued on to uh, uh, a trailhead called black track which is in the twin rivers state forest which is just beyond the swanee river state park so we'll get into detail on all of that um, the Suwannee River itself, you can see here, uh, this black line, this is the river, okay? So it starts up in Georgia, and then it kind of goes west for a bit, and then it dips south and goes down into the Gulf of Mexico. And so this little section in here is the actual hike we did. Um, and this is our, <clears throat> it's our itinerary. And again, we're going east to west, um, so that's why it sort of looks backwards here. We started on your right side of the screen, and then we proceeded from right to left, which is east to west, um, along our hikes. So our first day, we started at this county park called Gibson Park, and uh, then we um, proceeded to a campsite. It was about 6.7 miles. That campsite was just outside the Suwannee River State Park. And then we entered the park and then we went through the park. We'll talk about that in detail a little bit. And then we ended up at this uh, Cooper's Bluff, which overlooks the Suwannee. It's a really pretty campsite and there's a little shelter there. And then we kept going on the third day through this Twin Rivers State Forest and kind of moved away a bit from the Swanee River itself and then ended up at this trailhead. It's about at the end of the trail before it turns into a very long road walk uh, from there until the Big Bend of Florida and the St. Mark's National Wildlife Refuge. So let's talk about the Swanee River. It's, uh, a, a really wonderful place. Uh, it's a really iconic river, uh, the song, of course, <laughs> that everyone knows. Um, and it's also 
uh, I think it's the second longest river in Florida. It's 246 miles long. It begins up in Georgia in the Okefenokee Swamp, and it flows down into the Gulf of Mexico, and that's where it dumps into the sea. Um, and so because it starts in a basically a swamp at a very low level source of water, it flows relatively slowly compared to a mountain stream. And so therefore it's called a Blackwater River, <clears throat> which most rivers in Florida are. They're called Blackwater River because they have this very slow moving uh, that flow that picks up a lot of um, plant material as it goes along. So most of those waters aren't very clear. They have this sort of tannic substance in them. So they almost look like iced tea or something. And uh, the Swanee River is one of those. You can kind of tell in these pictures. Uh, it's, you don't always see clear through to the to the bottom. Um, but it's it's relatively clean, depending where you are along the river. We'll talk about water quality in a little bit. Um, and it's designated a wild river. Um, you may not know what that is. A wild river is a designation, that's a federal designation, and it's applied to rivers that have not been um, diverted or tampered with by man. So it's one of the few wild rivers of this size on the eastern seaboard. Um, that's because most rivers in the older settled parts uh, were all dammed up. So if you have a dammed river or diverted river, it's not considered a wild river. So the Swanee is one of our premier wild rivers on the East Coast. Um, <clears throat> there are 300 springs that flow into the Swanee River and are part of its watershed. 33 of them are first magnitude, which are the highest flowing, the most gallons per minute uh, of any of uh, springs as they're ranked. Um, another thing to be aware of here is that water levels fluctuate quite a bit in this river. Um, so normal river level, you'll be walking, we'll see some pictures, you'll be walking along the banks of the river and you're literally 30 or 40 feet above the river and they're very steep banks. In some cases, they're almost cliff-like with this limestone karst uh, uh, cliff rock material. And, uh, you know, it looks like, you know, how would this river ever come up over this huge tall bank? But it does pr pretty often. I mean, probably once every year or two, the Swanee will rise and overflow its banks. So if you are going to do a hike, it's good to just sort of check with, you know, your sources, but certainly you can check with Sw Swanee River Water Management District, and uh, they have a website, and it will show you the water levels, and it'll show you the flood levels. So if you're planning to go and the Swanee River is at flood level, um, don't go, <laughs> cancel your hike, because you will be, um, you, you know, hiking through water and uh, there is a, a fairly large flood plain on the other side of these banks. So you'll be, you know, in very deep water. So it's not very safe in many cases. The weekend we went, <clears throat> The water was relatively high, but it, it, as you, you will see, it was still very far from topping the banks. Um, two years ago, December, we had kind of unusual amount of rain in North Florida, and uh, the Suwannee was actually flooding in December, which is kind of unusual. Let me admit some people here. Okay, so I have seen it when it's completely flooded. 
Uh, in this case, it was pretty uh, running pretty fast. I think you can tell from some of these pictures as we go along. It was it was running pretty good current for Blackwater River. So we started. Uh, there are four different management areas, um, and so there are these four jurisdictions, different people, different entities manage the the land around this river. So we started out and, and along the trail that we were hiking. So um, we started in Gibson Park. That's a county park. And um, then we went through the Suwannee River Management District. And so the Swanee River Management District is the water management district for this particular watershed. There are, I think, five or six water management districts in Florida, which manage all the water in all the parts of Florida because it's, uh, you know, very important part of Florida is all the, the water and water sources and rivers and marshes. And uh, so Florida set up these water management districts. There's one for St. John's River, for example, where, where we are. So in any case, the Suwannee River Water Management District is everything along the Suwannee River and all its watersheds. So all of the, <clears throat> the major tributaries that come into the Suwannee River, all the springs that are along the Suwannee River are part of their jurisdiction. And so as you'll see, the Florida Trail in this section goes right along the floor, the Suwannee River. So it's a very scenic hike because you're always next to this beautiful waterway um, and you're in the watershed of the Suwannee River. And so you're under the jurisdiction of the Suwannee River Water Management District, which is really good because they, um, they make sure that it's kept nice and that it's pretty much free <coughs> of development and uh, it's managed environmentally and uh, it's pretty open. It's not like some state parks with a lot of rules. You could pretty much camp wherever you find a place to camp. There's no designated campsites. There are designated campsites in the state parks, but in the areas of the Swanee River Management District, you pretty much, whenever you find a place, you can just camp. So it's pretty wide open but well managed at the same time. Uh, and then we went through the Suwannee River State Park. So that's a state park. And um, so, and that's a beautiful state park. Uh, it's I think one of the most beautiful state parks. And uh, so they manage that area really well. We'll be talking about that. And then we, went, then we went into Twin Rivers State Forest, which is a state forest. So again, that's pretty wide open, pretty primitive, pretty, pretty un, developed. And the other nice thing about this hike is you don't need any permits for any of these districts, uh, which is not the case for other parts of the Florida Trail where there's a lot of red tape and a lot of, a lot of uh, uh, permits and, and various rules that you have to follow. So as I said, we started at this county park called Gibson Park. It's a nice little park there and uh, in the center of the state in the north central part of Florida. And uh, <clears throat> so you can uh, park for free there and do this hike. Uh, there are restrooms there. Um, there's places for car camping and RVs and it's just a really nice relaxed place. So we start out at Gibson Park on the first day. And <clears throat> so we walk up this Highway 751, which is where the park is. And that we cross the one of the main tributaries of the Suwannee River called the Alapaha River on this road. And so that's how we get on the northern bank or western bank, if you will, of that river. And so the trail turns west after the bridge and we get onto the Lapaha. And so after two miles or so, hiking through a beautiful forest, we come to the Suwannee River. And then we begin to walk along the Suwannee. And uh, about a quarter mile after that, 
there's sort of a little blue side trail. And I don't know if you can tell from this picture, but there's a sec there's a little area that's known as the Alapaha Rise. And what this is is a this is sort of like a <clears throat> sinkhole looking thing with these steep banks. And then in the middle, this is just a clear spring with a boil in the middle. It's just gorgeous spring, and it's actually the largest spring in the United States. It's not very well known. It's not like the springs down in Ocala National Forest where there's a whole swimming pool around it, swimming area, which are also very beautiful. This you have to kind of hike into, and it's kind of hidden, but it's incredible. It's huge, and it's just the largest spring in the United States by flow. So then we we're really along the, the uh, we've we've kind of come at the junction of the Alapaha and the Suwannee at that point, and then we begin to walk west along the Suwannee River, and it looks like this pretty much the whole way. You're up on these high banks, and you're looking out over the river the whole way, and through these beautiful riverine forests next to the river that are hardwoods like live oak and beech and hickories and some pines. It's just really, really, really peaceful, pretty hiking. And so after <clears throat> several miles, we came to our first night campsite. Uh, this was sort of a, you know, as you can see, it's a planned campsite. It's not just a random site. There's uh, some benches and there's a fire pit. Um, and it's right there by the river. You, maybe you could tell from this picture how steep those banks are. So we could get water from the river, but we had to walk down those the steep banks and we were able to get our, our water. Um, it was a nice little area by the, the river. And we got there with plenty of time. It was very hot. I mean, even though it was early March, you know, in Florida, you can get up there. <laughs> so it was probably, I think it was like high 70s, early 80s. And we really took it easy with a lot of rest breaks, a lot of water breaks. Um, and then we got there at a decent hour, so everybody jumped in the river. <laughs> we found this really cool beach where there's uh, a lot of road access in here, so you have a lot of you know local residents come in and use some of these areas from time to time. And so, as it turned out, some of them had left these chaise lounges there. <laughs> so we we availed ourselves of those and had a little beach afternoon, cool off in the river, and made our campsite and then started out on the second day. And as you remember, <clears throat> I said that first campsite was just outside the state park boundary. So we had another mile or so and we got to the boundary of the Suwannee River State Park. And that's known as the Big Oak Trailhead. <clears throat> and uh, again, I don't know how well you can see this, but it's a boat ramp, like a concrete boat ramp. And at the end, there's this dock, but it was, the river was so high that the dock was pretty much completely submerged. Um, but normally when you go there, you can walk out on that dock or you can take your boat in along the boat ramp. So it's, you know, not very picturesque, but it's, you know, if you're a boater, it's a nice place to put in. And there's a little shelter over here. <laughs> and uh, in previous years, for the last, I don't know, eight or 10 years, this was, uh, where the Florida Trail turned north and went around the park. Uh, you couldn't get into the park from here because there was some dispute with private landowners. And uh, so this year we were lucky in that we had uh, some negotiation with those land landowners and now the Florida Trail can go through the park. So you can go right into this beautiful uh, trail in the park called the Big Oak Trail. And it, this used to be part of the Florida Trail, like I said, about a decade ago. And then when this land dispute happened, everything got closed off. <clears throat> and so we had to take this reroute to go all the way around the park. And you missed this beautiful Big Oak Trail, which is just a, you know, an iconic, you know, well-known, beautiful hike. So it's nice to have it as part of a multi-day hike and not just a day hike through the park. 
So we were able to go into the Big Oak Trail from our route on the Florida Trail. And you can see there's here's this, the sign for the trailhead. And uh, the Big Oak Trail just gets further deeper into these woods and just beautiful sights along the Suwannee. And this is why they call it the Big Oak Trail. There's a big oak tree there. <laughs> so you can see, uh, you could put like six, eight, ten people and try to and span that tree. And that's about how, you know, how big you have to, <clears throat> how many people you need to get your arms all the, way, all the way around it. So that's pretty cool. So um, <clears throat> the trail is coming down through here. This is the Swanee. Let me see if I can use a highlighter here. So the Swanee River is this blue area here. And then this river here is called the Withlacoochee. So this comes down from just directly north to south from Georgia. And <clears throat> so as you can see, it's a little muddier river and the, the Suwannee River is actually a little clearer. So our trail is coming right along here along the Suwannee. And then you hit this confluence of the Withlacoochee and there's nowhere to go, no bridge. So the trail turns north and then you're hiking up along the Withlacoochee. And eventually you'll come to a road and then there's a bridge over the Withlacoochee and then we come back down the Withlacoochee on the western bank and eventually hit the Suwannee again, and then we continue on. So I'll show you that a little bit more as we go. Um, and so that's a really, really nice little junction of these two rivers. And this point here has a lot of really nice scenic overlooks. And so <clears throat> this is what it looks like as we turn north. Along the Withlacoochee, as you can see, it's a little browner, muddier river, a little more grassy area along the river, and some nice uh, pine forests along the river there. And then as we came down <coughs> that other bank and we went across the, the bridge and it came down south along the uh, western bank of the Withlacoochee, we went, we came through um, Ellaville, which is uh, pretty much a ghost town. The foundations of some of these buildings are still there, so you can visit those. And it was uh, in the mid 1800s, was uh, one of the largest sawmills in Florida. And it was started by this gentleman, Mr. Drew from New Hampshire. <laughs> and he came all the way down here and set up the sawmill and they had a train which serviced it. It's a big operation, but now it's just a bunch of stone foundations. So one thing that we were challenged by <clears throat> on this particular hike was some water issues. So those of you who have, you know, backpacked in the wild will know that you don't want to, I mean, you really can't carry your water for many days because water is heavy. So you typically are looking for natural water sources along the way, and uh, you're filtering those water sources. So there's really good water filters that filter out most of the diseases and bugs and things. And But uh, in on this particular journey, uh, we had an event which unfortunately happens all too frequently. The town of Valdosta seems to have a very antiquated, lousy, <laughs> Were poorly managed sewage system. And so from time to time, I, as far as I've seen, it's almost once a year, they'll have a sewage failure and overflow from their system, and they'll dump that sewage into the Withlacoochee River, which of course flows south downstream to the Suwannee. And so that water was contaminated to the point where it was undrinkable. And so we had to be aware of that. We were aware of that. Um, and we had to make some accommodations for that. Um, even if we filtered that water, we would be probably risking our health. So you kind of get a sense when you're out there 
and you're dependent on your water sources, how important water is, <laughs> you know, I mean, sometimes they're few and far between on the Florida National Scenic Trail. Uh, believe it or not, there's some dry areas where it could be a day you're going without any water sources. And so you really get to appreciate water and how important that is to our life. <laughs> and so here you have water that we can usually count on. It's a beautiful big river. It's usually potable water as long as we filter it. And because of an action of human beings or a lack of action or mismanagement, now we have uh, undrinkable water supply. So we were <clears throat> aware of that. So we took, we took uh, certain precautions. And uh, so we uh, left some water at our third night campsite. And I'll show you that in a little bit. So here's a map of where we've just gone. So here's the, the Florida Trail along in here. And we went through that big oak trail and then we went back up the Withlacoochee River and then over this bridge and then came back down the Withlacoochee River. And so, so here's the Ellaville that we saw before. And then the Florida Trail goes this way and our campsite was there. Now, some of the people we went with had to leave after two days. So in many cases, we do have a two-day option. And the two-day option this time was to for them to leave and go over the bridge and go back over to the parking area at the Suwannee, State, Suwannee River State Park. And so that's what two or three of our hikers did. And we continued on to this Cooper Bluff campsite. So here's Cooper's Bluff. So as as you can see, there's a shelter. It's not an enclosed shelter. It's got a picnic table, a couple picnic tables, a bench. It's got uh, you know a roof on it. So you could set up a tent there if it's really inclement weather, but it would still blow in. It's mainly just a nice place to eat, get out of the rain if you had to. There's this old cabin there. It's kind of run down from what I don't know. Um, and then here you can see there is an area we could drive into that's about half a mile up a trail from the Cooper's Bluff. And so that's where we cached a lot of water ahead of time. And so we all hiked up, got that water and brought it back. So we had water for the rest of the hike because of the pollution of the Withlacoochee. And of course, Swanee in this case, downstream from the Withlacoochee where the two joined from then on in, it was pretty much undrinkable. And so after we camped that night at Cooper's Bluff, we, uh, we had our last day going through the Twin River State Forest. And unbeknownst to us, there was a little flooding there. So, so we had to wade through the water, a common occurrence along the Florida Trail. It's not always dry every step of the way, and you never know sometimes when you're gonna get a little flooded area. So we did a little walking through water and came down to our car and went back and got our other car, joined up with it and went home. And that was our trip along the Swanee River. Now my heart grows weary, far from the 